This is the Ryan Marketing Show, and you're listening to episode 51 of 100. And today on the show, I have Adam Satterley from Your Solutions. Great to have you on the show, and great to be in your awesome offices, Adam. Yeah, thanks for taking the time to come see us. You are welcome. So a lot of people may have seen the Your Solutions uh, logo up on commercial building sites around the place, but not necessarily know what your business does. <laughs> Uh, I mean, my first guess when I saw, I think, the, the Your Solutions logo on um, the, the, what ended up being the Big Save warehouse in our Herrera, I thought you were the builders. Um, but that's just one part of what you do. So what's, what overall does Your Solutions, what, what do you provide? Uh, well, we come in as a, as a company, we try and start at the very start of a project with clients where we'll be involved through the leasing, through the design, right to... Manufacture, creating that timeline, you know, making sure that they're happy with their quote, sticking to their quote, um, handing over, and then literally giving the keys. So it's not just building, it's project management, it's joinery, um, and it's building, um, which we sort of saw uh, opening in the market six years ago, and um, there was no real joiners and builders focusing on shop fitting, so that was where we thought, well, let's get in and give it a nudge. Right, so you, you go in there once a business owner has signed the lease and decided this is the space for them, and then your job is to fit that out to their specifications in order for them to be able to start trading. Yeah, correct. So with, um, with uh, sort of your franchises will be involved when they're looking at leasing sites, looking at you know, what could be problematic down track, um, you know, trying to iron all those out before they go to the design stage, um, and then... Newer clients, we sort of come in when they're looking at leases. We sort of try and give them rough costings of what, you know, depending on their budget, what they want as a feel for the for the shop, um, and then also yeah, run it right through to the end. So there must be a lot of elements that you've got to consider and educate your clients or potential clients on because it's not just the aesthetics, which I'm sure that's the part they're most interested in. Mm-hmm. It's the practical elements of how many people can we have in here? Um, what's the flow of people? What are the health and safety requirements or the heating? Um, where does your services start and stop? Does it encapsulate all of those and more? Oh, definitely. I mean, it's, you know, when we work with clients, we work with them to try and, for the long term, of, you know, we want to see them thrive as a business because um, it also reflects us as a, as a company. Um, so, yeah, it's... it's right through from yeah, starting to start to the finish and developing a trust. You know, we're pretty big with trust with our clients, so we want them to trust us or we trust them. Um, and it comes down to, depending on what it is, it's all about flows, you know, impulse buying, um, the target market, making sure you know, some place want their products to stand out, so it's using very neutral colours, um, through to, you know, you can design something that's worth 50,000 or it could be a million. So it's working within their sort of parameters and their budgets to get the most out of what they want for a shop. Um, you know, because franchises and sometimes a new new to business, they've got different uh, budgets to, to work with. Um, so what are some examples of, um, of businesses that you've done the fit out for that, that might be recognisable for people listening? Uh, we've done Burger Fuels, we've done Starbucks, we do, uh, biggest clients probably Big Save, uh, Weta Studio, uh, we've done Beja Floor in, in Napier Town, we've done the Salvation Army, um, Tremaine's, Hastings, we do a lot of work with Tremaine's, um, we've just done a bakery in Havelock North called Gore Meats, so yeah, so from sort of the small ones to right up to the, to the big ones. And I guess with each of those projects, there's, um, you know, you get to refine some of the fundamentals of what you do each time. Um, But there must be some, with each project, some tricky one-off stuff. Uh, How do you go about um, either foreseeing it or or dealing with, you know, sometimes buildings that um, may be very old, that, that haven't been renovated for a long time, if ever. Um, How do you go about keeping you know, the client abreast of some of those things that no one can foresee uh, will come up? Well, I mean, that starts at the start. I mean, there's always 
Like if you say you're going to do a perfect job, you'd, you'd be lying. Um, it's, we can foresee as much as we can, but it's also prepping them for, through experience, some issues that could arise, you know, and it's trying to make a game plan around those at the start um, so that then they don't become an issue down track. Um, yeah, you know, with earthquake strength being a big thing, with what council requirements are for what you're setting up, whether it's a hair salon or an alcohol shop or, or a fast food joint, you know, each um, business has its own requirements that council require that they also require. So, yeah, it's stepping through all of those at the start and putting as much thought into it at the, at the before so that there's no surprises down track that, that come up. Um, and that's what we try and pride ourselves in is when we supply a price, we've, we've captured everything we can think of. Um, there might be the odd unforeseen, you know, rot or um, floor or ceilings, buildings, but um, we try and also identify that those at the start as a potential to pop up, but until you get into it, it's hard to, hard to really see. Now, you've been in the business with your solutions for what, coming up six years now with uh, Troy Morgan, is it? Yep. Uh, and prior to starting your solutions, you were working at FPG. Um, what caused you to one day go, hey, we should go and do this? Well, I don't know if there's really a cause. I think, um, yeah, we, we both did our apprenticeships at FPG um, and we learnt um, how to build or manufacture joinery to a very high standard there. And it also gave us uh, comfort, I suppose, is because they do national and international. Right. But that didn't hinder us as much as taking on jobs around the country. Um, but yeah, you know, through through there and then going travelling overseas and seeing bits and pieces out there, um, we sort of came back and I was doing um, joining business and Troy was doing a, a building and we sort of thought, hey, let's combine our, our skills, you know, we get on really well, we have our own areas in the company and um, yeah, we just sort of saw an opening and, and just said, well, let's do it, let's get involved. Now you've obviously got a lot of uh, wins under your belt uh, and renovations and shop fittings are complete with some of these uh, big name brands that you've mentioned already. Um, and then there's this one job that I think that has been quite a bit written about with uh, Weta Digital, um, taking on a, a project in some very tight time frames. <laughs> um, talk us through that process of because you must have had some some board conversations on should we shouldn't we if we do what do we need to put in place mm. um, you know what's the worst that can happen what's the best outcome and weighing all those up and a lot of business owners you know we we see those big opportunities and uh, wonder. Is it going to tip us over, or is it going to be the making of us? Yeah. Uh, and you, you don't have a crystal ball. What, what um, decision making criteria? What made you decide we're going to go for it? Well, we did a, a risk assessment at the start. I mean, like you're saying, you know, the time frame was was uh, probably the tightest time frame we've ever done with a with a project of that size. So we went through. Um, McKim's called us over and said, you know, we've, we've got this project. Have a look and see what you think. We stepped through it, but once it was, you know, when they first started talking about it, you know, it gives you a bit of a scare, but when you break it down into sections, then it sort of become less scary. Um, and then around that, it was around putting parameters around, you know, to do this timeline, these are our rules of engagement. Um, so yes, we can do it, but, you know, these are, you need to use common height doors and um, not sort of long lead items. So it was readily available materials, um, we provide our own subcontractors um, because that's you know very key to, to hitting tight timelines, and um, yeah, really just assessing and mapping it all out prior to starting. So when we said, look, this is this is the project, this is what we're offering, um, this is our quote, and we will hit that deadline. Um, pretty much, yeah. Go so the it. the two learning points there is around. Break it down into manageable chunks, mm -hmm. and there, where you know there's risk, mitigate that through your experience, and bring on a uh, a team of people that you can know and, and trust. So the 
and on that side of it, you know, your sub as a subcontractors <coughs> must be a key part for, for any element because you can't do all the, um, mm. the fitting and joinery and, and building necessarily yourself. There's other services that mm. have to contribute to that. Um, what makes for a great partnership between those subcontractors? Oh, open communication, I think, is very key. And, um, you know, we should have been specific. You know, that was Troy is the, the main man that went down and he's the one that really put all together and dominated it. I did the sort of this, the nice fluffy sales bit at the start and then um, he pulled it in. Um, and then it's really just being open and honest with your subcontractors and that's where I come back to that trust thing. Um, we put in timelines but we sit down, we talk to them about timelines, we talk to them about lead items and all that so that when we develop a program, we know that they're happy with their program and we're happy with theirs. So if anything trips them up, then it's either be on us or on them so and things happen and it's just being flexible during the process of okay well cabling hasn't arrived or okay what do we do in the meantime how can we keep the project running without stopping right now so um, and shop fitting is its own ball uh, it's not like building a house you know the guys are working some big hours and weekends to, to hit deadlines and, and it's yeah a big big part of it's just your team Team is core and staff, you know, good staff, they all get along, you know, hey, everyone has the ups and downs, but um, we've got a fantastic team, we all work so well together, and um, we can either split them up into fours, or we can have more working as one together. Um, now, having come back and successfully completed, you know, that major uh, job, which is, you know, probably one million plus or more, um, has Troy come back to you saying, hey, look, here's what I've learned, and now we, I think we've got the confidence to go and do this, this, and this. Um, is your team now you know, reached a kind of a, a new level of confidence to go after different types of businesses or, or bigger scale business? Um, to be completely honest, I think part of uh, being in business is also knowing your boundaries. So, um, you know, we had offers straight away of, you know, we've got this in Wellington, we've got this in Auckland, you know, six million dollar builds and that and we just said look that's too big for us so you know it has grown us as a company and it's also with Troy even on the floor it sees what we need to be doing probably better as an office for the guys on the, on the floor and also them for us um, but it hasn't made us want to go out and chase bigger contracts um, it's more given us confidence internally as a team that if we say we're going to do something we 100% do it um, and that comes from yeah, that, that project was, was a big ask and the boys all pulled it off um, as well as the subbies but by no means does that mean we want to focus on working purely for those big you know, wicker projects. You know? We've still got core clients that we've worked with since day one and we're still 100% with working with those clients and if these projects come along we'll do the same, we'll assess it and we'll see A is it doable and B, is it going to impact our business and take us away from our core, mm. which, you know, if you get absorbed into that too much, you can lose your, your business and your clientele over your head. And there is a lot, you know, just and on that part, there is a lot of, um, you know, construction and renovation going on <coughs> in the buildings and businesses in Napier, Hastings, Havelock North. Um, and, and, you know, my guess is that it's not just the economy, there's... You know, having a low interest rate environment you know, keeps the financing costs down of doing mm. some of those you know, retrofit jobs. Um, you know, how do you go about you know, finding that type of new client work where you don't already have those existing relationships um, with, a, with a Tremaine's or a McKim's that, you know, that use you all the time? How do you go and find the, you know, the next Beja floor, for example? Well, to be honest, it's through doing good work for those sort of clients. Um, we don't do a huge amount of advertising. It's a lot of our work comes through word of mouth and um, you know, being in networking up in Auckland and Wellington and, and Christchurch. Um, it's quite hard to put a finger on it, but a lot of our work comes from existing clients. They refer us on to you know, their friends or their business acquaintances that um, they might be looking to do something and go, hey, look, we've got these guys and we stand by them. So... You know, by doing right by those clients, they're also recommending us to, to others. So it's sort of growing as a, as a ball from, from the floor. And I guess the, the great thing about <coughs> the industry you're in is 
you can walk through your showcase multiple different flavors of it just by going into a Jets gym or a Burger Fuel or a McKim's furniture store. You know, your your work is on show. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And I mean, they can ask any one of our clients. You know, we always say to new clients, if you've got any queries, we can give you clients that we do work with if you want it as a reference. Um, and yeah, it is really good. I suppose we haven't really had that time to stop and actually <laughs> look at all the projects we've done, but you know, when you drive around and sort of see what we have done, it is really pretty uh, satisfying. Um, and that's a, you know, that's a luxury problem to have and a good one to have. Where do you, um, where do the new ideas come from, the new innovations in materials or surfaces or products? You know, how do you keep what you're offering clients fresh and new um, while also making sure you're choosing um, components that uh, are going to last, that are going to have a good warranty, um, that are, they're going to um, you know, be able to go through high wear and tear environments, which commercial and retail tend to be? Um, and where does that inspiration come from? Oh, it comes from your suppliers, you know, your suppliers are always bringing, you know, they're always trying to keep up the trends and all that. Um, a lot of inspiration comes from a lot of travel. When when we travel, which is, you know, most weeks, we try and go to your Auckland and your Wellingtons if you're in the food industry and sort of check out those, you know, what's happening, what's new fit outs and, and see what they've done that's quite cool and quirky and assess what they're using in that. Um, but also going to, you know, international trade shows, which is big as well, you know, that's you sort of see what the rest of the world's doing and try and understand what might filter down to New Zealand in, in a few years. And is there any particular products or areas that you're quite excited about that you've seen recently? Yeah, there definitely is. Um, but it's really trying to find the market that those products would be able to work well in and also the budget. Um, in Auckland and New Wellington is, is quite good with the fit-outs we do out there. Uh, they allow those sort of fitness. Uh-huh. Um, but then it's also trying to convince their architects if they're working with other people on, you know, look, we recommend this and that. And it comes down to what the overall theme is. So, <clears throat> yeah, there's, there's always uh, things that we get excited about. It's just trying to slide it into the clients. I guess you've got to <coughs> almost be that curator in a way, of having <laughs> everything at your fingertips just in case, waiting for hearing that, that moment or that requirement of going, ah, oh, that that surface could work or that material could work. Yeah, yeah definitely. And there is um, materials, you know, like we have got sort of the core materials that we use that we send out, which is, you know, nothing to flash, but it's, you know, a standard that we stick by is using minimum, like, you know, moisture resistant boards. Like we don't do chipboard or we don't do stamp cast wood. Um, you know, there are requirements we'll put on us personally as a sort of a this is our minimum that we'll do internally. Um, but yeah, with the sort of the new ideas that come in, it's, you know, the excitement is putting them into a, um, a new fit out and then actually seeing them work and seeing the clients be really happy and you know that they'll put their faith in you and it's actually come off when, uh, when the project's complete and they're like, oh, yeah, okay, <laughs> I'll give it to you two cents. <laughs> when you go into those places and you, know, you look around your work, does it give you that extra you know, level of satisfaction and pride to go, yep, the team's done a good job. Here. Oh, definitely. Like, there's nothing like um, the, you know, seeing the look on, on your client's face when, you know, you hand them the keys or you've hit the deadline and they come in and just that, you know, the excitement that they get from, yep, their vision is now actually there and, and you know, for them to then take it to the next level, which is getting their business up and running and pumping and it's quite a, yeah. It's you. You're right. It's quite a fascinating part because your business <coughs> ends when theirs is just beginning. They haven't made a sale at that location yet. <laughs> um, you've now finished the product uh, and the project, hand them the keys, and they can actually start trading and start to mm. get a return on on all the investment that's gone in to get them to that point, which is usually quite a considerable sum. Um, what you know, what is you know, I know, and I know this is like a million dollar question because there's so many different figures and specs but um, you know, for a retail operation that, that wants to make an impact through um, the retail environment they're providing um, you know what type of a budget or at least spectrum should they be thinking about um, while they're looking for spaces to lease? 
It's a real hard question, like you said, because it comes down to the size of the shop and really the fit out they're looking to do. Um, is it like um, <coughs> you know when you renovate a house that you know all the investment goes into you know, really the kitchen and the bathroom? Uh, and that's where the, the cost lies. Is it similar in the commercial side of things? Oh, uh, you know, if, if you're in, you know, the hospitality industry, being restaurants, then you definitely your, your kitchen's what produces your food, so that's your core. Um, but also, a lot of it's not so much your bathrooms, but your front of house. It's creating an environment for uh, their customers to come in and, and really feel, you know, what what the client, our client's about. We want to try and push what they're trying to. Um, get out there for a fit out, whether it's a Greek theme or a um, Italian theme, you know, it's really creating that ambience. So when the customers come in, if they've had good food and a good environment, then it's pretty much sewed up. It's interesting. So on uh, episode three, Kent Badley uh, from Ten Twenty Four in Hastings, uh, he mentioned that there was you know four attributes to a great customer experience, and that. 25% is the food, uh, another 25% is the ambience. Mm. Um, so it has a big bearing on you know, the ongoing customer experience, regardless of what's being served in that restaurant or bar. Oh, definitely. Like, I mean, if you're running what fit behind in the kitchen, but you know, your front of house and, and the, the ambience and the, and the feel of the place is good, you, know, you can get a little bit of leeway with that. Whereas if people exactly. are walking into someone that you know, might not have... You know, they're going for a meal, but it might not be sort of top range. And if something starts going wrong back there, they're going to start getting a little bit more shorter on this frontage. So it's, it's definitely about your service, your, your feel, and, and the food, I think. But that's only one, you know, that's the hospitality industry. Then you've got your, your sales of, uh, you know, retail, and then you've got your sort of your hair salons, and so on and so on. Reception areas to all sorts. <coughs> so you, we're coming into um, you know, quite a busy season for retail. So <laughs> uh, a lot of these uh, environments will be put to the test in, in terms of how many people can you know, come in and out of them. Um, do you guys get to take any time off? Like, do you actually get to, to take a break from um, working or do you have to kind of keep working right up until um, you know, 24th of December? <laughs> um, in previous years we have gone right through um, but as we've sort of grown as a company we've made it a company rule that we shut down on the 23rd and we'll do sort of two to three weeks depending so we'll program all our work in and around that now and we sort of have a, a day where we say yeah look at this we can't accept any more work um, and that's purely because the, the team works so hard all year that you know it's that time to spend with their families and um, you know Get a bit of life in and, and, and a bit of enjoyment. It's, you know, we pretty big on the work and life max because you know our philosophy is we work hard but we also play hard. So you got to. I, that I may have had time. one or two beers out at a, at a bar, so I, I know that I can vouch for the fact that I've seen you there <laughs> as well. Um, now you've got some quite exciting <clears throat> plans in terms of your you know, your office and, and where you're moving to. Can we, can we talk about these? Is that yeah yeah. Public? yeah. Well, so where, where are you moving to and um, what's the reason behind that? Um, well, like our clients, you know, we like to put our walls on the line as well. So we've bought another building which is down Edmund Street. Um, and we've just outgrown the space here. Mm -hmm. Tile Depot have been at our heels to take over downstairs. So, um, yeah, we saw that as a good opportunity that they want growth and, and we want growth. So um, we worked pretty hard with Colliers and... They've um, found us a good, good gym around the corner to, to move into. Um, so, yes, yeah, so we're going to set up around there and, and get a router and, and a bit more flow. We really want to work on our internal flow of the joinery factory and sort of a, a good building area and office and all that. So, Because a lot of the fit out <coughs> and the construction all happens at, at your office, right? Yep. This isn't outsourced to China or anywhere. This, no. this is jobs here in Hawke's Bay for people here for fit outs here. Yep, so Hawke's Bay, like we do, probably a uh, majority of our work is out of town. Um, and we do probably about 70% out and 30% locally. Um, but everything is manufactured truly in this building and then it's shipped to wherever it's required and installed by our team. And for your new office, um, <coughs> between yourself, Adam and Troy and the team, 
uh, who gets to decide what the aesthetic's going to be for your own place? <laughs> like, is it like, you know, the, the plumber never fixes the, the tap at home or is this going to be you know, the, kind of the opposite and be a complete showcase? Oh, well, that's where I'm all about creating those good environments and that. And then Troy, the business partner, is all about making sure the cost comes in right. So uh, <laughs> it's a good little juggling act between us. But <clears throat> yeah, like we portray a professional service and we want people that come and see offices to sort of walk in and get that little wow and, and a little bit of excitement you know, when we're trying to pitch them on projects. So um, yeah, we'll definitely be fitting it out real nice, um, but also within our own budget that we're going to stick to. Because um, at the end of the day, it's dollars and cents that come to the party as well. Yeah, it's, and it's a fine line, isn't it? Because you, you don't want to over-invest, but you want to make sure you spend right for the environment you're trying to create. And uh, you know, I'm sure that for the clients that you've got, um, they've you've struck that balance for them. You've helped yeah, educate them through what is you know relatively unknown process. For many, this might be the first and last um, mm. shop fit out that they do. Uh, and for others, this is cookie cutter, um, maybe in brand, but in location and, and the building that you've got to deal with may be completely different. Yeah. Um, so you're obviously doing a good job and you know, looking on your website, there's some fantastic testimonials that are up there. Um, so look, um, you know, good luck next year. And um, I look forward to the office warming that I'm <laughs> sure you'll have um, to showcase your new business um, location around the Edmund Street. Yeah, definitely. I'll, I'll let you know when, the, when opening it, so bring your drinking shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Hey, great talking with you today, Adam, and uh, thanks very much for your time. No, I really appreciate that. Thank you. Cheers. If you like this episode, remember to subscribe for free on iTunes. Simply search for The Ryan Marketing Show in the iTunes Store.